this look. Oh dear. Okay. As much as we've got the sun in our eyes, you can see it's pretty bad. And let's see if we can get you to go in there. Keep the sun blocking you. You can see it's already been patched up. This is replacement timber. Uh, couldn't be much worse. Oh, this middle bit section's okay, but then we've got to get this out. And uh, this down the other end section. That is not good. Not good. It's just literally... It's like it's been burnt, actually. It's all so bad. Okay, so inside they don't look that bad. Yes, they've been, they have been damaged and this is a, this is bad on the corner, but I should be able to put something in there and uh, we'll have a look at that. We'll have a look at that. So we've got to pull all that apart now and see what happens. Okay, we're back from Bunnings now, and you can see we've laid out, we've got a couple of pieces of Maranti timber. Now this one, I'll just move the pencil. This is our template that we've got, the top panel of the, the pop top roof up here that we're renovating. So if I move that back, you'll see, we've got a nice piece of Maranti, which only came in 2.4 by a bit higher we only need it I laid this down we need it one 140 depth and we needed it 2.715 length so I've bought this and we're going to actually join a piece on with some metal brackets that I've got <clears throat> and we'll we'll bracket it inside and out and then when it's joined at the top and at the bottom I think it'll be fine um, I do have some additional steel plating I can put in now this piece of Maranti alone cost 80 something dollars this second piece for the join and for any extra bits like the end bit that is a bit rotted uh, we can cut pieces to suit from this just that piece alone was $32. Now you can see here it is uh, on there. It's um, Maranti 2.4 meter uh, per, it's dressed, I think dressed and nice straight pieces. And I did additionally get one other piece in here. It's my work shed. So I got one other piece that's just a smaller, thinner bit um, in that same 2.4 metre length because I figured I'd be able to use that potentially for any little cross beams that need supporting. Now this is the insulation that I bought. I will turn around. It is um, Sound Shield inf Insulation R 2.5. So it's... Um, the width is 90 thickness, then 430 by 1160. So there's 14 pieces in a pack. Uh, it'll do 7.5 metre square. So we're going to get a lot. I think it's probably all we'll need if we're conservative with it. You can see it's sound shield, super soft. Definitely reduces the heat because it reduces energy bills. So I guess that's their way of saying fire protection and it's a sustainable. So uh, this particular packet, uh, $84. So um, that's not too bad. They went way up more than that. And if we look at the end, we're going to have to um, open this up. And we'll probably pull apart these vats 
but I don't want to touch it too much at the moment. They did recommend just for safety sake, wear a mask and wear gloves when handling it. And I wear glasses anyway, so that should protect my face. Um, I've got a hat on and it's just better when you finish touching it to then wash your hands and um, maybe even change your clothes. One clamp down the other end. So I'm going to utilize this. Okay, here we are in the work shed. Now you can see what I've done is I've cut the piece of Maranti down to the shape that that yellow uh, outside plate is. Always handy to have a box filled with all different kinds of screws and bits and pieces for different renovation projects. You just never know what you might need. So um, this is my travel one. So this is always goes inside every van that I take away uh, because it is surprising what you or your neighbor might just need. Now, because remember we said the piece wasn't quite long enough and it was a choice at the time, according to the Bunnings guy, the only three meter piece I could get to do this job was actually um, more to a treated pine. And I just didn't want to take the risk. And I can tell you the difference from cutting this, you can see, I'll just take it to there. Cutting this is so easy. It treats like a hard wood, but it cuts like a pine. It really is very easy. It's got a very fine grain. So you can see here, I have wood glued it together and I've chosen some little screws. They do have rounded tops, which won't matter in this regard. And I'm just going to put um, random ones to strengthen here and use the other plate on the other side. So we've got a little step here from the difference in the height of this timber. It won't matter. The fascia is still going to go down along there. So might be able to pack it a little tiny bit with a little chip of wood. Um, this looks really good so I'm going to get that done and then the next thing that we're doing will be uh, putting the insulation inside the roof before I attach this beam back and seal her up again. Radio. Okay, this is the insulation unpacked and it kind of divides off into that kind of thing. Now, it looks pretty interesting. Looks a little bit like timber, love the earth tones. I just wanted to show you, I've uh, gloved up and masked up to be doing this. So I've just used one of my COVID masks with a filter on it. Now I want to show you this. Let's go back a bit. So this is a sheet that I have cut in half and then I've split it into two halves. So if we open up this and lift this up, okay, you can see there's a cross beam running in there. And I'm talking about this one going across here. And so what I'm doing is I'm putting one of these half sheets in, then using a broom handle, push it across. Now, I've erred on the side of keeping this foam um, in as well, the vermiculite or um, polystyrene. I've left that in because why not? It's in here and it's added insulation. So you can see I've done this side and I've put two halves across and to hold the wood up to hold the, the ceiling up oops let's go that way i've used this board so if i take that away um, you can then see inside so what i'll do is i'll just let you see inside here see what i mean so We've gone all the way across the other side so that I don't have to take the other side off, uh, the other board like I'm replacing here in order just to get the, the um, foam, the, 
the wool insulation in. Um, now that the timber's out, we can tug that a little bit further across and sit it nicely. It doesn't matter that it's not coming all the way to the edge here because this is going to come down to meet the timber. So I'm watching the, the roof as well, the roof alignment. It's way down over the other side, but we don't want it too high. Um, so it's there's a lot of things to be considered. So I'm going to pop this one in here now on both sides and then I've got up the forward side to do as well and then we can finally get this bit of timber the silicon cleaned up and ready to uh, put the, the timber back on you can see we've got to clean up this first okay back in a minute okay now we're a few hours later and you can see I have insulated inside the top filled right over to the other side with these uh, brown bats we'll call them they're certainly not pink and I have made the top new piece of timber it's now all joined up both sides been wood glued and it's had time to dry um, so nice and solid now each end I've had to rebuild because of that rot and let's go down to this side and had to rebuild it. So that one I'm a little concerned with on the front end. Um, it's going to have to straighten out with the application of this join. So I'm just working out now. It looks like this was previously uh, stapled on, which we don't really want. We want it, uh, we definitely want it screwed on properly onto this beam so we're going to have to drill and screw so i'm probably going to need help to support it or draw it up and do the pilot holes first so um yeah got to do this and then clean off all the staples off the top and the and the old cork you call it or silicon and uh, re-silicon and put the J-rail back on. So all in all uh, it's now like 2.30 in the afternoon. I've been going since 6.30 this morning so um, I've had a couple of short breaks and the trip to Bunnings but it's definitely uh, a longer project as usual than you'd ever think it was. So um, I'll get to putting this on and um, and we'll see how we go. I think the J-Rail will wait till tomorrow. Um, we'll fill you in on the next little part of this journey. Bye for now. Okay, update, uh, we're still working on the roof and to put back this panel that I've got laying on the floor here to keep it nice and flat in the heat. So I found that I need four hands to do this so I'm waiting on some help coming today. In the meantime I've been getting back the top metal, getting all of that old silicon off it so I can reseal the J rail on there properly. So let's have a look. I had to nip down to Bunnings and get a couple of these wire brushes because I was using scrapers and all sorts of things and it really wasn't working. So I'm gonna um, take you through where we're at. Let's just go up here. We've gone all of the um, the insulation all the way through right the way over to the other side I've cleaned up significantly on the top and taken it basically back to bare metal because um, 
you can see the paint is crap so it's all going to have to be sanded back and doing this roof I'm trying to work out a good way to get up there without actually getting on it and that's not going to be easy um, you know if we had the facilities nearby I reckon this whole van needs to be sandblasted so it's actually something I'm going to look into because it would be a whole lot quicker to sandblast it after I've done all of the sealing and um, then work on just you know priming and and painting much much quicker uh, but it's not registered and it means I've got to probably replace the tires first and then get a permit which is nothing the permits easy but you can see like the paint is terrible and it would actually come up really well if we sandblasted it right back I know my poor arms are just gonna be I don't know they'll feel like they're as long as a, a gorilla by the time I'm finished so you can see I thought that this was this kind of stuff here was um, it was fairly neat I've been picking it off to try to alleviate too much and there were staples underneath um, in the edge let's have a look under here uh, can't sort of get to that there we go um, there were staples under here and I've pulled them all out because they would have stopped that piece of um, timber sitting properly when it came back in so I've decided to get the wire brush out again um, on the drill, here she is, and go over all of that. It all has to come off. And the heat's getting up. I've been at it since quarter past six this morning, and now we're, I don't know, about quarter to ten. Um, it's been a lot of work. I found there were, I don't know, at least three layers. This seems to be more like a putty that it's been put on with. Um, might add the nail holes are still rusted so it does show that the water was getting in there but if, if I've got any hope of protecting this new board coming in this has to be right. So I thought it's worth a little video just on this just to talk to you about that. Try not to go halfway bad renovations are just that they're bad renovations and often they become someone else's nightmare like this one um, the top here is just it's so thick with silicon here it's going to be a nightmare to get off um, while it could be quite sound you don't know where the tiniest crack is and i just feel I've got the tools. I think it's better to take all that back to bear and re-silicon it properly. Um, really don't want to take these J rails off. I'm just going to silicon up to the edges, but clean it all up properly, and um, hopefully uh, that works. So I'm going to take a couple of photos inside because I realise I've been doing it all on video, and we do need the photos. This is some of my handiwork. You can see. Oh my goodness and I have used some of those brushes um, I don't know if you can tell let's go back a little bit you can see where the black brush which is the hardest brush says it will remove rust I doubt it um, but they're Ryobi brushes so they should be good quality but it's the hardest of all and you can see where I've just taken off that flaky paint so